engineers are considered jack of all trades. So in general, they don't have many polarizing matchups. Instead, they excel in performing many roles and only struggle when forced to play one role and not given many opportunities or situations to utilize their main strength of a massive arsenal of abilities and versatility. However, that doesn't mean there aren't ways to play around their specific animations and traits. Their heal skills generally all have cast times, but the only one that has much counterplay to it is the AED. Depending on if this is traded, it will last 5 or 8 seconds. If the duration runs out naturally, it will heal them for around 4000 health, but if they take lethal damage, or basically if they would have downed while it is active, they will heal 12,000 health and cleanse all conditions. You obviously want to get them as low as possible without killing them. They will be trying very hard to get you to kill them by playing very aggressively, which means they won't be dodging. So you can land all your CCs on them instead of your damage to prevent them from getting too much done while in this heal. And then reapply conditions right before it ends and pressure them again. For this reason, it's not a very good heal because as soon as you learn how to play around it, they lose all of their sustain. A vast majority of engineers will use the alchemy trait line, which means they will be using elixirs. These give them small effects along with a generous amount of boons. In many ways, you can't stop them from gaining these boons, but you can corrupt them or rip them. Playing around alchemy traits and elixirs is very much about playing around passives you can't really see. Many engineers take the protection injection trait, which gives them protection passively whenever they get hit by a CC. Even though engineers are weak to CC, this trait helps them to survive that vulnerability. However, it does have a decent cooldown, so if you see that they keep getting protection during your CC burst combos, you can bait out the passive proc with a daze or small CC and then go in once the protection is gone. Another strong trait in alchemy is the Elixir E. When brought below 33% health, they will gain protection and barrier. If you're a power class, you may want to pressure hard until you see the barrier proc and then back off. 3k HP doesn't sound like a lot, but it's 3k with protection. If you don't have a lot of people with you and you're just like in a 1v1, you're gonna run out of steam if you try to blow through this cooldown. HGH is a very common Grandmaster trait that they will take. Because it has so much synergy with all of their alchemy traits, and because of this, they will usually use many Elixir utilities. Elixir R isn't that common, but once you see that they have it, you need to learn to play around it. The tool belt skill has a misty effect, with each pulse reviving allies within it a significant amount. This is used mostly for supporting allies, but an engineer can even use it to revive themselves by placing it right before they go down. If you see this, you want to have a knockback for their body because you will struggle to do enough damage while the engineer is also CCing you. You can also just run away and don't down them while they're standing in it. If they self revive after you get them down, not only will they get a heal, but you'll also waste a lot of damage trying to keep them down. It's best to save your damage and delay. Another very strong elixir you need to play around is Elixir S. This will make them invulnerable and allow them full control of their character's movement. They cannot cast any skills, but they can revive allies or finish enemies. They can also dodge during this effect. Normally they won't dodge during Elixir S, but if they're using Elixir S, they're usually in danger and they'll want to dodge right after the duration. If you see an engineer use Elixir S, you know they're probably an easy kill, but wait until they dodge once or twice after the Elixir S to throw on the big damage. Elixir S also has a stealth tool belt skill. Be very careful and run away from the location they stealth during this, unless you are really confident in chasing them because they can turn around to fight if you run into their combo while they're stealth. Elixir U is a high momentum utility because it's a stun break and gives some stability and a lot of quickness. If you see the quickness come out, 
you want to wait till the stability is gone or try to rip the stability and then CC them. They're usually out of a stun break after using this and trying to play aggressively during the quickness so it's going to be hard to trade with an engineer with quickness casting all of their skills. Some of their other utilities we want to watch out for are the elixir gun and the toolkit. The elixir gun can be used on duelist builds for a lot of survivability and on node pressure. The acid bomb in particular is dangerous because it deals a lot of damage over time but has no real animation to it. You will however see when it's placed down by this jump like animation which can also be stowed to make them travel less distance. The toolkit has an unblockable pull which can yoink you from really far away. Just dodge once you see the thin lines created by it. Grenades are very strong for how much reach they have and if they trade for explosives they'll move even faster. You want to avoid grenades, you want to move in a zigzag away from them. If you move in unpredictable ways they can't lead you on and if you move away from them it's also going to take more time for the grenades to get to you making it harder to lead you on and make that judgment. Also I know a lot of you guys hate flamethrower engineers but playing around them is as simple as playing them. Just keep getting behind them and they will struggle to keep facing their flamethrower at you. Also terrain and z-axis in general makes it hard to deal with because they have to face the direction that they want their flamethrower to shoot. Explosive engineers will have the explosive entrance trait which you can see on their buff bar. This means that every first attack they deal when they enter combat and every time they dodge will deal damage and if they trait for flashbang it will also blind and daze if the enemy it hits is above 90% HP. So when you see that they have explosive entrance on you want to dodge that first attack and whether or not it hits it will consume that attack and every time they dodge they will also get it so you need to basically prioritize dodging the attack that they use after they dodge first rather than any other kind of attack. Core engineers have the static shot which will just bounce a blinding and confusing projectile. You don't want to attack while you have confusion on you. Then they'll have shields which can give them a lot of aggressive potential and defensive potential. Each skill has a defensive part and then an aggressive part on the second part. So the four skill will projectile reflect and then once they cast it again it will knock back enemies. So if you see them casting this you want to get away from them or you'll get knocked back. And then the static shield will stun and block anything that hits them in melee range and then they can throw it for a little extra damage and a daze. And this is an unblockable stun if you hit them in melee range. So if you're using like a block and there's some kind of AOE on the ground by you, they can actually interrupt your block using static shield. So you gotta be careful around shield engineers because they have a lot of CC. Rifle engineers will have a lot of poke damage and CC. They can immobilize you from afar and their overcharge shot will knock you down for a really long time and enable them to land combos on you. Scrappers have a lot of utility with the hammer weapon set. It will give them a whirl, which is a projectile reflect for like one second. They have rocket charge, which is a series of evade leaps. You can actually hit them in between those leaps though. So if you really wanted to hit them, you could time your attack in between there. And then they have shock shield, this is a block and then Thunderclap which is a stun and AoE you don't want to stand in. They also have a lot of gyros that they can use. If you see they have a lot of barrier and the bulwark gyro around them like this, you generally don't want to hit them because this is a lot of barrier that it creates. Then you have sneak gyro which will give them and their allies stealth. You can't really play around this too much but you do know that it is on a decently long cooldown so if you see they just use that then they can't use it again for a while. Scrappers will also convert 15% of the damage that they deal into barrier. So oftentimes killing a scrapper is avoiding their damage. 
but in team fights where they get a lot of damage anyways because you can't really prevent that they end up being a little bit tankier but in those team fights they do lack a little bit of vitality so they're easier to focus so in small scale fights you want to try to avoid their damage and stay away from their barrier when they're in bulwark gyro and like the elixir e and then you want to do bursts of damage and not trade with them because scrappers excel at trading with others they also have the function gyro which is their f5 and when they use this it will do a quick little burst of damage and it creates a area of effect that will stomp and revive allies and it can do multiple effects of it so if there's one ally down and one enemy down it will create multiple gyros to stomp and revive appropriately so how you want to play around an engineer in this situation is you want to cleave out all of the function gyros first and then you want to go about playing around that down state situation because if you try to res well then the function gyro is going to just stomp and then if you try to stomp well then the function gyro is just going to res so you want to cleave first and get the gyros out of the way hollow smiths will have access to the forge kit as their f5 which will give them a lot of high momentum skills but they will also be limited by the overheat mechanic so if they're very spammy and in their forge you know that when they leave the forge they will have to leave for quite some time until they can re-enter and reduce that heat whenever they leave forge they will usually take a trait that cleanses conditions and converts them into boons so you don't want to put on conditions while they are in the forge you want to put those conditions on while they're out of the forge because when you enter into forge you have a five second cooldown until you can leave so if you're out of forge you're pretty time gated before you can get your next condition cleanse and then you have corona burst this is one of the stronger skills in the game it does a wide aoe and then there's a delayed second round of that same initial effect you want to avoid this by socially distancing yourself you want to avoid the second one if anything this is a very spammy skill because it is a very low cooldown and it doesn't have that much heat generation so they'll often use this quite a bit and if you dodge every single effect of the corona burst you're going to be out of dodges very fast so often what you'll do is you'll ration your dodges to only avoid the second delayed corona burst effect and the reason for this is because the first corona burst has a cast time but the second one doesn't so you can basically put another animation on top of that second corona burst delay and if you dodge the second corona burst then you're usually dodging a second ability along with the corona burst so you're dodging more than if you're dodging the first corona burst so if you're tight on dodges and you can't dodge all the corona bursts then only dodge the second half of it there's also holographic shockwave which is a very short aoe knock up and you just want to walk away from the hollow smith when they use it because it's so short range that if you're just moving away from them you generally won't get hit by it um, unless you're moving towards them then you want to watch out for photon wall not a lot of hollow smiths use this anymore but it is a frontal cone block you can hit them from behind though then there's prime light beam you have to be careful about this because it is a very heavy knockback skill there's also the crate elite utility which is a very long range stun and it plays a lot of turrets in the area which can stun you more and immobilize you more so you want to either cleave those out if the engineer is on the defensive or you just want to get away from that area if they're aggressing on you then there's the elixir x elite utility which gives you a 50 percent chance to either become a tornado or a rampage and depending on which you get you want to play around it differently the tornado will give you a lot of pulsing cc's and damage whereas the rampage will give you a little bit more single targeted cc's and damage play around the tornado by just simply getting out of range of it and when you see it goes really fast 
then you want to dodge that. And the Rampage, you want to try to dodge the Rush skill because that does the most damage. But if you get hit by any of the CC skills, you can pretty much in ensure that you'll get hit by the Rush. So you want to save a Stun Break for when they use the Rush ability. Warriors take advantage of the lack of Stun Breaks that Engineers have and their need to be constantly spamming out skills. Warriors can also generally stick to Engineers because the two have similar levels of mobility, making the ranged skills of Engineer not as useful. Necromancers are the bane of Engineers. They are the best at debilitating and controlling the amount at which Engineers can freely cast by progressing fights faster than they are comfortable with. Engineers also love boons, which Necromancers love to corrupt. Thieves can't survive long against Engineers because they're so squishy and Engineers never run out of damage, so they're constantly pressuring and have the ranged damage to pressure Thieves even while they kite. Mesmers can be very squishy and their clones can easily be cleaved out by the AoEs of Engineers, but Mesmers can fight back with a lot of lockdown and burst while also being able to outmaneuver the Engineer. As I said, Engineers are jack of all trades, so the rest are usually neutral or depending on a lot of other factors. Here you can see an engagement with a thief in 1v1. I immediately start pressuring them and they can't get close to me without taking a lot of damage. So they immediately back off because they know that unless they start off the duel in an advantage, they're not going to start winning the longer it goes on. So an engineer is really good at poking out squishies while also being a little bit tankier to survive. And here I'm going to pressure a little bit this mesmer off the node. Now a mesmer can do a lot more damage to me than a thief, but I do chase him into far because I know that they're a little bit low and probably pressured from the mid fight. However, the enemy team starts to push in and I am now outnumbered. So I elixir S there and because I elixir S, I get out immediately because I know that I'm very vulnerable. Now if the enemy chases me while I have no elixir S, I'm very vulnerable. So this is a good chase here. But I do have rocket boots, which not every engineer is going to run. So here's an important thing to do as an engineer is to counter pressure. So when you are outnumbering an engineer, even as a thief, you have to be very careful because they can counter pressure you and you might even die. So one way you do play around engineers is you don't pretend like they're just gonna flop over and die, but you do play aggressively. So you need to like play very safe around their skills that they'll be using while kiting, but still maintain an aggressive position to kill them, especially when they're out of cooldowns. So yeah, that's pretty much Engineer. If you like these kind of videos, like it and subscribe, and check out the matchup video playlist in the description below and I will see you guys next time.